So <clears throat> I'm doing a series on real life statistics on doctors and their performance. Uh, if your doc is a, um, a solo practitioner, he will tell you he's really good. And um, I'm sure he believes it, he or she. Uh, the problem is in a solo practice, you never have somebody hold up the mirror and show the doc how they're actually performing compared to others. Um, that's what this, um, this series is about. And I've showed these statistics. Um, it, how would I know this? Again, as I've told you in many other uh, videos, I am, have been a career medical director. I trained in preventive medicine at Hopkins, and I've spent most of my career since then supervising large groups of, um, of doctors, 500, 800, and more. Um, these are some statistics from a company I uh, worked with a long time ago. And again, these are, are true numbers. They show a significant um, difference in the ability of doctors to perform, especially in the area of prevention. Today, we're going to be talking about malnutrition. Uh, <clears throat> to orient you, if you haven't seen the other videos, uh, malnutrition is the cluster n number four, the fourth from, I believe it's your left on the screen. Um, and you see the blue and the red bars are zero. The uh, green bar is 8%. And here's the, um, here's the thing. Here's what these mean. The 8%, the green bars are the docs that score, score well on other preventive services, like making sure you get your hemoglobin A1C, making sure you get your, um, it, your um, colon cancer screening, if you're a female, making sure you get um, bone screening, uh, bone density screening, things like that. Now, let me ask you something. Are you sitting here getting ready to pass on to the next... Um, video because malnutrition is not interesting. Malnutrition is a major killer. It's actually been rated 0.78 by, by uh, Medicare in terms of danger for patients. And that is, it, it is one of the most highly rated items. Now, how do they rate it? The actuarials look at the probability of somebody getting really sick, ending up in the hospital, disabled and or dying. So um, malnutrition is something that people don't really think about. This is a Medicare uh, population, so most of these folks are 65 and older. And what we tend to think is, well, you know, this is just a skinny little old lady or a skinny little old man. I've actually done a couple of videos on this issue. Uh, they had to do with muscle wasting or sarcopenia. Uh, look at those other videos. And again, you'll start to get an idea that Malnutrition is not just a simple problem with um, getting a little bit thinner. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, again, what's the difference in performance with docs? Again, your typical doc usually doesn't even notice it. Uh, how about... Um, how prevalent is it then? Well... <clears throat> Well, before I talk about how prevalent it is, let's talk about how you diagnose it. It's muscle and fat loss, uh, decrease of 50% calories for more than two weeks without trying. Now, that's different from being on a, an intended diet. Uh, weight loss, greater than 2% in one week or 5% in a month. And a prealbumin level of 3.5. Most docs, even if they get to that rare atmosphere of actually thinking to look for this, will still look at albumin. Uh, if you're starting to say, wait a minute, I've heard of albumin before. Microalbumin creatinine ratio. Uh, I've covered that in many uh, other videos. It's the most important uh, indicator of cardiovascular inflammation. Now, why is that? Albumin is the uh, most common protein that we find in our serum or our blood. Um, <clears throat> the microalbumin creatinine ratio is what you see in the urine. How much albumin you see in the urine. Why does that matter? It has to do with kidney functions and the intima or uh, endothelium 
that most important lining, slick lining of the artery wall. The kidneys are nothing but a filter, and the filter membrane is um, the intima, the endothelium. So if you have uh, damage to that endothelium, which is the number one cause of inflammation, um, then you will be letting the most common protein in your blood get through into your urine. That protein is albumin. So that's why the microalbumin creatinine ratio is very important. Now, <clears throat> when you start getting into it, when the um, body starts getting into protein calorie malnutrition, what happens is you stop making enough of that albumin. Now, why don't we measure albumin? Why do we need to measure prealbumin, as I mentioned? It has to do with some other components of metabolism and how albumin is stored. Uh, again, prealbumin is the, is the thing to look for. Um, let me uh, talk for a little bit about um, other ways to look at this. Usually if you've got a BMI of 18.5 or less, we start, you really do need to start thinking about malnutrition. Um, and again, it's not, don't think, well, it's just a little old, skinny little old man or a skinny little old lady. These folks are in danger. And if you have a loved one in this condition, um, think about it and focus. Now, again, how often does this happen? Well, it's 4%, 4 to 10%, um, the best we know in terms of a statistic for people living at home, again, 65 and older, uh, 17 to 65% in nursing home residents, 35 to 60% in, folk, in older folks with poor dental status, dementia, or depression. And it's even higher for older folks that are in the hospital. So again, keep an eye on this. And then again, don't think, well, it's just a skinny person. This person's in danger. And why does all this matter? You can get them out of that danger. You have to work with them to get them to eat. Now, uh, let's go uh, talk about how do you, uh, how should a doctor be assessing this? A doc that's focused on prevention is going to be doing a, at least a mini nutritional assessment. What is that? This is here on this um, on this view. They uh, here's a, it's just a few questions that you ask the the patient and or family. Has food intake declined over the past three months due to loss of appetite, uh, digestive problems, chewing or swallowing difficulties, weight loss over the past three months, um, mobility. Mobility and uh, neuropsychological problems are one of the major danger areas for this. If somebody can't get out of their bed or their chair, do you think they're going to eat when they need to? And when do you have problems getting out of bed or in a chair? If you've got dementia or if you've had a stroke. People with dementia and strokes have huge risk for developing uh, protein calorie malnutrition. Again, BMI is, is an obvious one. Uh, BMI less than uh, 19, you start to get some risk uh, there. Uh, calf circumference, that's an, another way of looking at it. Just look at the uh, how big the calf of the leg is. That's one of the first areas that starts wasting away. And uh, I didn't mention de uh, depression. We did mention dementia, but not depression. Depression, again, in uh, thin older people is a a significant risk factor because they just tend to not eat. So that uh, gets us through looking at the real life statistics for docs and their ability to pick up uh, protein calorie malnutrition. If you're in your 50s, 60s, quite often you're not, you don't have danger of this. But again, if you know somebody that's 65, in their 60s, 65 especially, or older, who is a thin old man or a thin old lady, Begin thinking about this. You could save their life. Thank you for your interest.